Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Uladu Narpadu. Today we're going to look at verse 15 about time. The past and future stand only by depending upon the present, which remains always. While occurring, the past and future are both only the present. Therefore, the present is the only time. In other words, there are not three times, past, present, and future. There is only one time, the present. The truth is that the present is non-existent as one of the three times, and the sole reality underlying the sense of present time is the ever-existing self. Trying to know the past and future without knowing the truth of the present is like trying to count without knowing the value of the number one. Elementary, my dear, the soul. <laughs> so, we see here a parallel between the previous verse, talking about the three persons, first person, second person, third person, and the three phases of time, present, past, and future. Let's look at time for a little bit. Time really is only the present. Whatever is happening is only happening now. The past is just a memory. The future is just an imagination. They both have the quality of dreams. And even the present. Because the present seems to be a bridge between the past and future when we look at it in name and form. But when we look at it in reality, it's simply dependent on the ever-existing self. The self never comes into existence at a particular time, nor does it ever cease to exist later on. So, it is beginningless and endless, therefore it is eternal. So, of course, no conditions attach to the self, including the condition of being limited by time. Therefore, the self not only is eternal and ever existing, it's really the only existence, because it is the only thing whose existence is unconditioned. Everything else is limited by time, cause and effect, karma, so many things. Qualities, the personality. Okay, so the present is like the first person. The first person is I, the ego, the mind, and it is basically an imaginary thing which is created by covering the original self. Covering it with what? Well, the Buddha gives three things. Ignorance, desire, and delusion. Because we cover the original unconditioned self with these three things. We create something called the ego, our sense of I am. But not just I am, I am this, I am that, I am a man, I am an American, I am a writer, I do videos, and blah, 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 like that. That's the ego. So when the ego becomes the master, we suffer. Why? Because it's built on a lie. Ignorance, desire, and delusion. 
Therefore, the world, the second and third persons, that is built upon the ego is also a lie. And we experience this every day. Oh yeah, I'm going to meet you at four o'clock, right? <laughs> and they're never on time. Maybe they don't show up at all. Huh? False promises. False promises are maya, the illusion. Huh? The maya says, oh, you're going to enjoy so much. It's going to be great. Everything's going to be peachy. It's going to be wonderful, right? And then what happens? Suffering. Even if you get the object of the desire that you're following, chasing like a dog after a bone, then it's never fully perfect. There's always something wrong. And even if, it's, even if you get it and it is perfect, it's temporary. And it will go away. And then, of course, there's somebody is, if anything is worth desiring, somebody else also desires it and they're willing to fight you over it. And, of course, they don't follow any rules. <laughs> it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Why? It's based on a lie. So, though we may have nice, high-sounding words about principles and ethics and all this stuff, in reality, it's dog-eat-dog -dog world, just total competition. Now, young people are being deceived into thinking they have to go to college and rack up a huge debt and learn all kinds of skills so that they can get into a startup company and make all this money and then retire at age 25 and all of this. It's nonsense. It's a dream. Maybe one in a million gets to do that. And what about the rest? They're saddled with crushing debt, working a job they're overqualified for, a dead-end service position in some ridiculous company. Huh? Most of these jobs are just bullshit. Huh? Oh, I have to use the Sanskrit term for bullshit now huh? so that we can have a high-class uh, video series here. Anartha Kabach. Anartha means useless, false, sinful, deceptive, and so on in that vein. And Kavacha, of course, is uh, Kavakya. Anartha Kavakya. Kavakya is like speech, talking. So useless speech. Uh, untrue speech, deceptive speech, ugly speech, offensive speech, anarta kavakya. So we are getting so much of this now. And even the channels of communication that we used to rely on for truth and uh, integrity, like the news, has become hijacked by corporate interests who are just using it to disseminate their propaganda. So everyone's being taken for a ride. Huh? This is Maya. Maya. Ma means not, and Ya means what exists. So it doesn't really exist. In other words, it's deception. It's a lie. So the world of Maya has these three persons. I, you, and him. And similarly, the time of that world has three phases. Now, then, and future. Past and future don't really exist. Uh, they're just mental uh, phenomena. Just like you and he uh, don't really exist. They're just mental phenomena, concoctions of the mind. Why? To justify the meaning of I. I as separate from you and him. Similarly, our concept of the present is simply that which is separate from the past or the future. And we see it like a river, always flowing, 
uh, from the past to the future. And there's no way for us to stop it. It's linear. Huh? See, these are all artifacts of our conceptions of reality. Our Aristotelian two-valued logic. Our Newtonian space time. Huh? Linear space and time. As if space was something rigid and and uh, and at rest and that everything moves around within it but space itself stays still no you can't measure space there's no way to tell whether space is still or not there's only a coordinate system which is based on some piece of matter like your body uh, and so Einstein came up with the idea of an observer. He invented the three-dimensional coordinate system where all three dimensions are at right angles to one another. So the theory is that time is another fourth dimension which is somehow or other at right angles to all the other three. I don't know how it's possible. But the whole thing is simply a speculation. It's simply a thought. There are many, many, in fact, there are probably unlimited different coordinate systems that could easily describe the same world that we're looking at. It really makes no difference whether our coordinate system is Earth-centered or Sun-centered or centered, you know, between my eyes. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. So we might as well take the one that most closely matches our experience, which is that I am conscious and everything else appears within my consciousness as a phenomenon. This is the viewpoint of Brahman. This is the viewpoint of the self-realized being. In fact, to adopt this viewpoint is realization. And actually, everybody has this viewpoint. Isn't it? And the only reason we translate from the uh, realized viewpoint to any other viewpoint or any other coordinate system is to communicate with others. <laughs> and in doing so, we invoke the whole space-time phenomenon, uh, past, present, future, first, second, third person, ontology. You have to understand this. Huh? It's a filter. It's like if I want to observe clouds, this is a really, a really interesting example. Try to lie on your back one day and watch clouds passing over. Huh? You can see that they're passing over, but it's hard to actually measure their velocity or direction because they move so slowly. So what actual uh, weather observers do is take a mirror and then they have the mirror scribed with a grid coordinate system. And they don't look at the clouds directly, they look through the mirror at the clouds and that way they can tell or they can measure how the clouds are moving. Well, we do the same thing. The mirror is artificial. If you look at the sky, there's no lines. <laughs> the lines are something we invent so we can measure things that are hard to grasp. So in the same way, we create these lines called dimensions and directions and measures like measures of distance, measures of time, measures of weight, of mass, of energy and so on. So we have these different measurement systems and even then we get into trouble because one country has one system and every, all the other countries have another system and so on. What a mess. So we create all these artificial things up to and including the world and we think that I am this body 
existing within this world. And then we wonder, why am I suffering? Why can't I fulfill my desires? Why aren't I happy? Because we have divined happiness as fulfilling the desires. And the desires can't be fulfilled because they're a lie. And the whole world that they're based on is also a lie. The truth is the world exists within our consciousness. And it is what it is. We can't change it. We can't bend it to our will, the will of our tiny ego. Because it is really existing like the grid on the mirror. Huh? It's existing as a coordinate system on top of Brahman, on top of the self. So it's artificial. That means it doesn't really exist. So, any questions? <laughs> if you accept this point of view, you will go completely into another space and you will be so blissful, you will not be able to believe it. <laughs> so, don't just blow it off because it's not what you heard in school. Hey, those people in school just want to exploit you anyway. So try it. Try looking from this viewpoint, from the viewpoint of the self, Brahman, and you'll see. Om Tat Sat. <laughs> Om Harihi Om. <laughs>